So I thought I'd share a little bit about onion selection. This is Siskiyou Sweet. It's a sweet yellow onion, originally uh, from Walla Walla Sweet. And we have been growing seed for this variety for about 20 years, and I just finished doing all my selections to put these back in the ground, which I always do right around the equinox. So these are nice. Um, you know, well cured. We grew these from transplants in the early spring, cured them, and now dried them, and we're finding good ones to put back in the ground, basically. I'll share that in another part of the video, but we just put these right back in the ground, and they grow over the winter, uh, and then make flowers in the spring, and then seed. But one thing I've been doing for now 20 years is roguing out ones like this, and roguing is to remove ones that don't belong. You can see how this one's divided, almost like garlic cloves. Um, here's another one that's more subtle. See, it's just not round. And if you don't do this process, here's another one where you can really see the division there. Uh, many vegetables begin to feralize. Here's another one. Uh, and this one, it's very clear. So if we don't take these out, and these are allowed to make flowers and cross-pollinate with the nice ones, then we just lose the, the beneficial characteristics of the variety. So this is roguing. This is something that small-scale seed companies can do. Uh, I know large seed companies on their breeding end will do this, but uh, there is something to the small scale where we can curate a variety for many years and this is an open pollinated variety so you could take these and grow your own seed um, but we're trying to take care of it so that it performs well under organic conditions so show how we plant them in a little bit and um, you know maybe that's something that you're interested in doing and in general it's just a good way to learn about biennial seed crops where their life cycle requires not necessarily two full years, but undergoing what's called vernalization and uh, experiencing the short days of winter going into the lengthening days of spring that triggers flowering and then seed production. Hi there, my name is Don Tipping. I'm here at my farm in southwestern Oregon where we have a small bioregional organic seed company called Siskiyou Seeds. And I'm gonna to talk today about one of the things that we do here this time of year. We're just a few days away from the fall equinox. So now is the time for planting onions back in the ground. We grew these this spring. I think we planted the seed about February 1st and then we were transplanting it into the field in mid-April. We grew up onions and probably sometime mid-August we pulled them, cured them, dried them down, and then I have selected them for the ideal shape and size of this particular variety that I've been working on for about 20 years called Siskiyou Sweet. And this was developed by the late um, Alan Vanette, who had a seed company here in Williams where I live called So Organics. And um, I've taken this variety uh, after he passed away and for the last 20 years I've been growing it and selecting it to keep it true to type and continue to adapt it to our climate and so on. So onions being a biennial means they're kind of like a daffodil. If you could imagine, they're like a, a bulb. They are a bulb. They're in the Amaryllaceae family, the lily family, and their reproductive uh, approach for making seed is to make a bulb that then dies down and then goes over the winter, thereby going through a process called vernalization. And vernalization, if you can recall the term the vernal equinox of spring and fall, refers to the change in day length. So onions, typically here at our latitude, which is a little bit more north of 42 degrees north latitude, after the summer solstice, they begin a bulbing process, then they senesce and the tops die down and then they go dormant. So they've been sitting dormant for a little while. They would probably start to sprout even not in the ground on their own, um, but putting them in moist soil, like the beds I prepared behind me, is going to expedite that process. So 
now we'll put them back in the ground and then they'll begin to sprout and they sprout from what's called the basal plate this area down here uh, where the roots emerge and then basically like scallions kind of come up through the middle the outside doesn't really do much it's just a sugar and storage mechanism for the bulb so you know for me my low end on um, size is about these like ping pong ball size anything smaller than that doesn't work and the really big ones we just save for food because you don't actually get that much more seed from the really big onions so you want to plant a minimum of about a hundred bulbs in order to ensure the genetic breadth when saving seed from outcrossing crops like onions and uh, if you save seed from less, basically you're bottlenecking the total genetic potential and all the alleles that may code for traits that might be important at some point in the life cycle of the onion over the generations when it's growing. So that's why minimum population numbers are important. I space them about 8 to 12 inches apart. I think I'm going to do three rows in these beds behind me. and. So we put them back in the ground, they begin to grow, they put on a little bit of growth and establish roots uh, through the fall before the cold, short days of winter come on. And then they just kind of sit there and wait, but they're pretty frost hardy. In my experience, they can go down easily into the teens and quite possibly lower without any frost damage. Then it, when the, in, for our area here in February, it begins to get warmer, the days lengthen, and the plant grows up these, they look like scallions really. Um, and then they begin to create flower buds in April and then usually by May they're flowering and then pollinating and then those seeds get fertilized, you know, the immature seeds get fertilized and then they begin a dry down process and we're typically harvesting seed in August. So all told, the whole life cycle is about one year, but we call it a biennial because it straddles the winter. And that's true for most of the biennial seed crops. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, you can think I seeded like this particular onion February 1st and then I'll be harvesting seed in the next summer in August, most likely. So there's a little bit of background on, you know, how, how you get to this point and how you get to seeds. And I'll show you the next step here and um, then I'll do it in time-lapse so you don't have to watch the slow, tedious process.